Welcome back to another video. This is going to be the last one in this series other than putting everything together, and this will cover the accessories. First up is a 1740s cap from the American Duchess 18th century dressmaking book, which I would highly recommend. So this had a gridded pattern that I needed to transfer to my very professional pattern paper, some Christmas wrapping paper. This was my first time taking a gridded pattern and scaling it up, and it was super easy with these small pieces. One square in the book is just an inch, and you just trace it out with right angles, and it's done very quickly. The fabric I chose for this cap is a lightweight muslin from Burnley and Trowbridge that I also wanted to make a apron out of, which I still haven't made and I don't think really goes with this outfit. Maybe if I make a different like floral printed cotton skirt, maybe I'll make an apron for that later. But for now, just the cap. I was trying to be really strategic when cutting out these pieces to make use of the nice selvage edges wherever I could because the next step is going to be hemming all sides of each of these pieces. So I thought that it would be a shortcut to cut on the selvages, which did help, but it caused some problems later that I'm not super happy with. So it's probably, you're probably better off just hemming all the edges like normal, just to keep everything uniform. But hindsight's 20-20. You don't need to cut out a pattern piece for the ruffle, it's just one long strip, one long rectangle. I think I did two and a half inches wide uh, to count for the seam allowance when hemming each side. I decided to follow the instructions in the book and do the whole thing hand sewn, and it didn't actually take as long as I thought. This was a one day project, probably a total of three or so hours. And to hem all of the edges, I follow the technique in the book where you first turn it, turn the edge about a quarter of an inch and baste it down. And then once the basting is done, then you fell, you fold it in half again to make an eighth of an inch sort of rolled hem and you um, fell that in place. So this is what it looks like when you've done all the basting on all the sides. And then next up is the turning again, turning the folded piece so you have four layers built up. You can definitely see here that I'm very amateur at this. Um, so this is the top edge has been finished and you can see it's kind of lumpy and bumpy. I'm sure a more experienced hand sewer would do that much better. But this is what it looks like when you're doing the second part. Um, just little tiny stitches that prick to the front side. And here is the finished band and the finished ruffle edges. And you see how I didn't do anything on that selvage side. Next step is the cull, and that involves getting a drawstring, and I'm using some linen cord from Burnley and Trowbridge, and you secure that on either side, and you make an eyelet in the center, and then once that has been secured and the eyelet is done, then you flip the bottom edge over, and you would do it twice, but I had a selvage edge, so I just had to flip once and secure that down, and now you have a drawstring for the back of the cap. Now it's time to gather. Uh, the book recommends starting gathering about an inch and a half up, I believe. And I learned why people gather by hand because, oh my God, it's so much easier to gather by hand than it is by machine. By machine, I am constantly breaking the thread, which basically makes you start over and sew a new line. And I think I will be doing gathering by hand from now on for everything because it's so much better.
My technique to make the gathering even isn't super precise. I like to match up the middle pieces so that you at least have half of the gathering on either side. And then once I do that, I match up the edges and then I break it into fourths and then further down, depending on how big the object that I'm gathering is. And then sort of just spread them out by hand, not like counting or making sure it's like exactly. I know some people make their gathers super precise and have a certain number in each section, but I just do it by eye and make sure it looks pretty even before pinning everything down in place. Those pieces are then joined together and make sure you catch every gathered spot. And you can see here that my time saving technique um, kind of backfired because now you can see the selvage. Thank goodness that these are beautiful selvages and maybe just add some detail, but that thicker white band shouldn't be there and I should have sewed that into the cap instead of leaving it out. And time to do lots more gathering for the ruffle piece. For attaching the ruffle, I used the same technique as before where I attached it to the middle and then attached it on either side and then further broke it down into smaller sections to spread out the gathers. This time I wanted to make sure I was sewing the call of the, or I guess that's the band there, sewing the band to behind the selvage so that the selvage is hidden and where the ruffle is sewed on isn't showing it like it is where the other two pieces are attached. And once you've sewed that on, you're done. It's a really quick project. You can add um, ribbon detailing and they show you how to do that in the book as well, but I don't have any ribbon, so mine's plain for now. My only problem is that my hair doesn't really fit under it, so I might need to make a bigger one at some point. Next up is a square fichu, and this is showing the importance of pulling threads. I thought I cut a really straight rectangle until I decide to pull threads and then look how much I had to cut off to actually go along the thread lines to make this square. This was my first rolled hem attempt. I did my stitches probably a little bit too far apart, but it looks okay. I don't know if it would survive a wash, but I can always redo it later. Now here is my favorite part of the whole project. The stomacher. I chose this floral design that um, was on the American Duchess blog that I really liked and has sort of a, I think it's Scottish themed because it's got the thistles on there and it really fit with my Outlander vibe we're going for. So I traced on the pattern just with like a pen, which was probably a bad idea. I probably should have used like a fabric pen. And I used a trick where you turn over a Pyrex glass baking tray and you just put your phone flashlight underneath it to trace, which was super easy and such a nice tip I saw on Instagram. 
and then I attached interfacing to the back um, to make it hold up to all of the hand embroidery. I haven't really done any embroidery since I was a young kid, so I just really went for it. I didn't really have any particular techniques that I learned for this. I went color by color at first, and then I, when I got to the flowers, I just started doing the whole flower in all the different colors at once, because it was easier than moving the embroidery hoop around. A lot of people find embroidery very tedious, but for me, it was very relaxing and I think I could just embroider all day long. I was so sad when I was done. My technique I was using was to conserve thread. So instead of the pattern being identical on the front of the back, I tried to make the thread as least visible as possible on the back. So st stitching each row, you would go from one side to the other and then over a tiny stitch and then from that same side back to the other to make the solid filled in area on the front and then the back would just have an outline of the shape instead of using all of the thread to fully fill on the back as well. The hardest part I found was making sure your threads aren't twisted because they don't look as good when you're trying to make a solid filled in shape when your threads are getting all twisted around. some daily progress shots. We have day one, and then day two, and day three. One technique I did want to learn is doing French knots, and yes, I am in an RV and this footage is terribly bumpy, but I was just sort of showing, this was the only like actual embroidery technique I was using and I thought it was so fun and I think that it looks so nice as the center of the flower. You basically wrap it around the needle before pulling through and you create this little knot that kind of looks like what the center of the flower looks like. So it works perfect. this was the finished embroidery. I love it and I couldn't wait to put it on the stomacher. It was in dire need of an iron. I thought the embroidery looked so much better once I had it all ironed out. I decided it was silly to make a whole new stomacher because I already made a boned one that was kind of ugly for trying on the jacket. So I thought, why not just cover that with different fabric? So I just cut out a piece of plain for the back, ironed the edges in, and then I also cut down the embroidered piece that I had and ironed the edges in on those, and then I thought I would just sandwich them together around the bone stomacher that I had already made. I just wish I'd been a little more careful when making those tabs for my mock-up stomacher to make them even and the same size, but literally doesn't matter and no one will ever see, but that's something that does bug me a lot. <laughs> Thank you. 
By some miracle, I found this tiny spool of thread that matched exactly to my stomacher color, which was perfect. And then I just basically so sandwiched the edges together with just kind of like a, I don't know if you'd call this like a whip stitch, uh, something, I don't know, just sewing them together on the edges. And here's the stem curl finished. My embroidery almost accidentally goes off on the top. So I probably should have drawn it on lower down to begin with, but I'm super happy with it, especially the colors. I love the colors. And of course I needed shoes. I got the American Duchess Kensington's in black, which I'm too afraid to put the buckles on just yet. And I got some stockings from Penny River Costumes. And that's the last accessory. I threw some other ones in like that Scottish pin and a ribbon to tie around my neck. But these are all of the finished items that will be put together with a full ensemble in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and if you missed any of the parts of my outfit so far, you can go back and watch the videos for all the undergarments, the skirt, and the jacket.